All right, hello people. Welcome to the Fantasy Fair. The what is it? Oh, that is right. The most magical podcast on earth. Hey everyone, happy May the Fourth. This is our Clone Wars uh, extravaganza. It's gonna be awesome. I what we're doing is something uh, unique to this uh, to this uh, podcast. Uh, we're gonna first review Shattered um, because, like, a couple of minutes ago, Disney Plus decided to drop early, uh, well, earlier than expected, the finale. The series finale to Star Wars The Clone Wars. So we're going to be uh, reacting and watching live on the podcast uh, before you. And then after that, we'll review the finale uh, after we're done watching the episode when you guys are going to join along. We're going to have like a live audio commentary with this whole thing while we're, we're experiencing it. So we're going to experience it together and everything like that. So, uh, but first, uh, uh, to do a couple of uh, 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 grounds keeping we are gonna do uh, review shattered the episode uh, previously and then we're gonna uh, review uh, victory and death after we're uh, we're done watching the episode um, and uh, you're gonna join us along while we react cry and do whatever emotion um besets upon us during this wonderful wonderful time to be alive the force is with us i am i'm ecstatic i i i, I needless to say i'm pretty sure the rest of the panel here is too so Miranda, before we before we talk about shattered like uh, what is your anticipation for you know the finale like how are how are the emotional floodgates like holding in before we dive into this whole ordeal not uh, well <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> I honestly like I tried not to think about it all day because I feel like if I did the day was just gonna go by forever um but I've been watching like a bunch of like Star Wars content and like yeah yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean it doesn't really help but it does <laughs> a, a, a little bit I was basically um watching some old like um it, it's crazy to, to call this old now because it's been a few years but some old Rebels content of like Sabine and the Darksaber and the last like quote unquote official battle of the Clone Wars with Rex and the and the battle droids and it was like yeah I it's been a day <laughs> you know it's been a day it'll be a day long remembered yeah um, that should be I'm, the title of the podcast a day long remembered that's what I was thinking yeah. that's what I was thinking <laughs> literally we're just coming up with this like <laughs> on, on the, the spot, spot. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's fine um I I just oh God like okay let's let let me backtrack a little bit in the in the history of of Clone Wars I and you know if you know the story um, I pretty much danced on the grave of this show when it was announced that it was uh, it was canceled um, I <laughs> what was former me thinking I love how he I love how he leaves out the part in front of his best friend's face. In front of his heartbroken best friend's face, he he laughs about the dan the grave and dancing on it. He leaves that out all the time. Shh, uh, darling, it's too much. Um, I, I, it, 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 what was former me thinking? Because this show is amazing. It is like, it's the former Star Wars content. You know held in upon its former glory um with the original trilogy but just like added a little bit of prequel flair um and that's what pretty much the clone wars is and it's just been this whole entire uh, a ride i absolutely absolutely loathe ahsoka going in i thought she was annoying very quippy high-pitched you know 
you know, Sky Guy, you know, and I was completely, you know, completely pissed with her character. But then, you know, Sky Guy and the nickname Snips means something to me now. Um, and just like the emotional roller coaster that I've been on with Ahsoka and Rex. Um, and that's why I was like overly ecstatic. I mean, when we watched uh, the the season one finale of uh, Star Wars Rebels, I was kicking, screaming. I think I broke her chair, Alexis, when yeah. uh, when Ahsoka <laughs> was revealed to be the fulcrum, because um, I had no idea that they were bringing Ahsoka into the show. Um, you did, you did, but I had no idea. So I I was completely enthralled with the with this whole uh situation and that i was like it it clicked on me how much ahsoka meant to me and then seeing her leave the jedi order and just like this whole entire uh like uh, you know complex feels of it all just really really honed it down together with star wars the clone wars i mean i don't uh, ahsoka to me is like the you know in my top three favorite star wars characters of all time superseding i think luke khan and you know all the you know uh the original three you know just because how much she means to what star wars is i think um so i think that that is where we are where i am at least with the clone wars uh how do you feel alexis's with the uh, with the Clone Wars, before we dive into Shattered, well, I I was never really clear um, if when Alexis first got into the show. I don't remember either. I mean, you guys are the ones that pushed me to watch it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this was like the first like Star Wars content, at least for me, that I like truly loved, mm-hmm. and like what got me like excited about it. Um. Mm. I think before this, I I think I, I watched the prequels before this, and that might have been it. I'm not, like, I don't remember, because I don't think I watched it. I, I definitely watched it before Force Awakens, because I think we were, like, kind of leading up to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean... I love it so much. Like well, that I, was a big year. That, that was a big year because like yeah. in 2015 we were leading up to Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. And that was the year of Star Wars, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And so like we were kind of indoctrinating Alexis to watch all of the yeah. other movies that she hadn't we, seen. We were <laughs> baptizing her in everything Star Wars, pretty much. We dunked her head in the Star a Wars denomination water. of the Mouse uh, Church, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> it is a denomination. I mean, like, Star Wars is pretty much the Catholicism of the whole Christianity branch. <laughs> <laughs> um and Star Wars is kind of a hard thing to shake off. Um it it is uh, I think that this was incredible and you coming along with the journey of like kind of like we we see you rise into <laughs> Lord <laughs> Moreno um was was really uh something special. It like it's so fun looking back at that year with you guys because the thing is is that we were already amped up star wars the force awakens that you know it awakened the fan and i think both me and alexis soto um no pun intended or maybe yeah you know what fuck it yeah pun intended (laughs) uh i like it was fun and also like i loved that day when we gathered up in my house and we watched the we watched the original trilogy and um bits and pieces select <laughs> bits and pieces of the prequel. Yeah. and by then i had seen the clone wars because order 66 i remember i started crying <laughs> oh yeah because yeah. like it because like that like you said before clone wars was like this huge thing for you uh you know star wars wise and you know i was like oh wow uh, revenge of the sith is actually is uh, eliciting a positive emotion yeah you know <laughs> that i haven't seen in quite some time and i was like okay yeah let's okay let's do it um and and honestly i think that was you know the the best part of that situation uh that we could ever come through with it and uh, clone wars i think has has lived on 
within all of us. We did a, I, I, you know, I, I thought we were going to get the finale in like a different format. To be mm, honest, I thought yeah. we were going to, I thought we were going to get it in like a comic or a novel or, um, or maybe, maybe if they, if they, uh, if they wanted to an audio drama. And I mm-hmm. think that would have been cool as well. Um, but I didn't anticipate we'll get it in its full Clone Wars of it all detail. So it, it it's just beautiful. Uh, Alex Soto, tell me what got you started into the Clone Wars um, just to get that story up there. You know, I... I really... My love for Star Wars really was traced back to 2000 and for 2005 my initial introduction into anything star wars was the the original clone wars miniseries on cartoon network and then i saw revenge of the sith in theaters which then in turn got me to see the other prequels and then the original films so Um, sith was really your bounce off point from star wars Mm -hmm. which is really funny because like we are in that era right now Mm -hmm. in terms of clone wars and everything Mm -hmm. and i think that i i uh, how does that like impact you that we are in that era and it kind of brings you closer to home uh like many things is coming full circle there are a lot of really interesting aspects as far as like coming full circle with this finale it's not just you know the end of the clone wars but it's also pretty ironic that you know the Clone Wars was ri- ironic. <laughs> was originally the, the the first thing that was done away with by the Disney regime, and then we come back all the way around it to where um, they've granted clemency and allowed for the series to be completed. It's really interesting turnaround in a matter of seven years from where that took. Um, but for me, I would think that the, I've had kind of the longest road to get here because (laughs) I have been with this from the very beginning. I was one of those people alongside with my brother to go see the movie in 2008 because I loved Star Wars that much. And I was at that point where I was interested in more content, never thinking, of course, I'd ever get anything. And I wasn't expecting the movie to be great. And of course it wasn't, but it was just fun to see something Star Wars. And then I got excited to see the series air on Cartoon Network. And from 2008, from October 2008, I would tune in every week for every episode of those initial five seasons. And there was, I can tell you a lot of wonderful stories and memories of watching that show especially that it was very important to me and my brother. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember watching the finale of season five, watching Ahsoka walk down those steps in the Jedi temple, fading to black. Mm -hmm. And I here in this room and thinking to myself, wow, if they were to like end it off there, that was just a beautiful finale. (laughs) Never of course expecting the series would then get canceled after that. Um, And, um, Losing the Clone Wars initially did leave a hole in my heart because it was such um it, it had su- I had such a reverence for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And whatever content we had gotten ever since then was just bonus stuff that I really do love. And for me, it redeemed like the Lost Mission, right? The Lost Mission, like that on Netflix. the Dark Disciple novel, the Son of Dathomir comic, Ahsoka. even right. The Ahsoka novel, like there's even Star Wars Rebels, especially Star Wars Rebels. To me, because they really, yeah, because like Star Wars Rebels really closed off a lot of like you know details that we were, yeah, we were missing or lacking from you know the unfinality, um, the factor in with the um, not getting to see a, a proper series finale for the Clone Wars, um. So I completely understand that. It brought a sense of closure in many, you know, big storylines. But in the back of my mind, I always wondered what it would be like if they had finished that finale. 
And then here we are about to wrap it up. And it's just, it gets me, you know, I'm not going to lie, a little emotional thinking like I never would have expected 2008 me in that theater watching the quality of that movie and think that all these years later, we it'd be a whole community of people who would be as ravenous, as excited, as passionate about this as I was. And it just, it, it feels like it's all come full circle. And I'm just so happy that I get to see it finally. Yep. It, it, uh, also, final... it also like makes me happy that this is like, at least right now, this is like the one thing that like, all Star Wars fans are like super into and actually love and appreciate. Isn't that nice for a it's change? Ni- it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's kind of a throwback to 2015 when everybody was like yeah. unified and like Star Wars. It man. hasn't felt this way since 2015. I'll be honest with you. It hasn't felt oh. like this. The excitement hasn't felt like this uh-huh. since 2015. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's honestly really good. A uh, final question before I, we get into, um, shattered, uh, did you, what, what capacity did you expect, um, to consume the finale before, uh, Disney, uh, announced that this is coming to Disney plus anybody me, but uh, yeah, Alexis. I never thought we'd get it. I like thought, I thought maybe capacity. like a book or something. Not like this. Maybe a book, maybe a comic, maybe yeah. a retelling, but like I never thought we'd get it like this mm-hmm. and for it to be as good as it has been so far. So as I've said with Moreno, I, I've said this to her many times, I consider this entire Siege of Mandalore especially a wonderful birthday gift. <laughs> and it happens to be my birthday, so of course I'm going to mention that, so yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> um. Yeah, May the fourth. It's it it it's good. It's good. Um what was I gonna say? Okay, shattered. Let's get into shattered. Um moments we liked, moments we didn't like. Let's have like a, a Lucy Goose conversation. Um let's start from the top of the episode and then work our way towards the bottom. Um Yeah, so we left off with Maul being captured, guys. We're, uh, we are in crunch time. <laughs> in, like, literally crunch time. Like, Vader is being born before our very eyes within this episode. Um, I mean, at least in a in a different part of the galaxy. Um, what was your guys' reaction just to see, like, this whole thing unfold, starting with, like... It, it with honestly Order 66. the whole episode felt like super short even though it wasn't but because it was so intense like the music in this episode was so honestly the music in like the last two episodes have been amazing but this one I felt like it just made you like your heart race and like, you knew what was about to happen, but you didn't want it to happen, but you wanted to see it, but at the same time, you did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's so... <laughs> I keep, like, telling my brother this, but it's, like, it's so funny that this, like, 30-minute episode gets me more excited. <laughs> than <laughs> Rise of Skywalker, right? <laughs> that dumpster fire. Um, I think... <laughs> Now available on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, go binge watch the Clone Wars instead. Guaranteed better time. Um, or our audio commentary. So uh, I I think No, because then you're affiliating yourself with the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Regardless. Um I think like you kind of want to throw a cannon under the bus and everything like that and yet you're like but i i can't look away like yeah. it's like a kind of a train train wreck gonna happen but then you're like oh, i don't want to see it but uh, it's too good yeah. you know and you're kind of like peeking behind your fingers you know while closing your eyes it it's it it honestly it and also the usage of like audio clips from revenge of the sith i think is just like the the cream of the crop um, Alexis, what was your reaction to this whole 
thing unfolding with Order 66. I couldn't agree more with Alexis. I think um, there are many aspects to the episode that I feel are worth much discussion and much praise. But the score in particular was perfect for crafting the tone um, and the sense of dread throughout the episode. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure if you guys noticed it. I noticed it from the top when you had the logo, Clone Wars, and then the like part three shattered or whatever. The first bit of music that we hear to open the quote-unquote Order 66 episode is Rex's theme, the clone's theme. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm not sure if you caught that, but that's I, I love that touch there because it's already telling you this is it. <laughs> this is what like the whole show has kind of been building to. And like again, the music in so many ways. Of course, the the how it kind of it's it stirs it stirs the pot. You have this score that makes you feel cold and unsettled. And it builds, and it slowly builds, and that crescendo, when Order 66 is enacted, and you have Anakin's Dark Deeds, the score from the episode uh, Revenge of the Sith, that explosion of music while Ahsoka is deflecting that gunfire of the clones. Honestly, one of the most effective uses of a score in recent memory throughout the whole episode you just were creeped out and the the i love how dave was just like dicking with you the entire episode showing you these long like cuts of like how many fucking clone troopers or we should call them stormtroopers now um are littered throughout this um this cruiser it just and yeah oh, I, it's the way I, I i remember i was like i saw the clip on on uh on youtube i was like okay let let me let me get a little taste of what i'm what i'm gonna dive into you know so i'm a little bit prepared you know it's kind of like putting on your floaties before you know your uncle throws you into the pool and you learn how to swim for the first time um it it was honestly like i felt like chills you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't stop because I knew that, you know, there was so like, you know, it was on a serving with you, Ahsoka, and, you know, just doing a little salute and just like how much these characters have like interacted and like intermingled and like how much they mean to each other and knowing the shit that's going to happen, you know, uh, you know, just a few seconds, not even a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I was expecting like two more minutes of like dialogue. Um, but no, it's literally he walks away, the words are said, comes back. Yeah, and also like this is where you get the complexity of the clones because with the original prequels, you didn't really get that. There were just numbers. Mm -hmm. They were just paint by number, you know, soldiers and all that stuff used for, I guess, cannon fodder uh, in terms of like filming your action scenes and everything like that. But here, you know, you have rex he's shedding a tear he is absolutely like ah ah ahsoka fives you know and trying to you know figure this shit out and what it means and everything like that and rex knowing and again this is where like the character building is really good where rex is just completely enthralled with what ahsoka's knowledge is and what how, what she's capable of and like her intuition of like surviving i i think that you needed that dynamic between rex and ahsoka to work otherwise the scene uh, wouldn't have worked as well <laughs> no it wouldn't have and just the fact that you know and again with the dynamic because you already fell in love with like ray and and kylo and the force awakens just seeing all the shit go down in the last jedi it makes it more impactful you know where you fall in love with ahsoka and rex and what they mean to not just star wars at large but something uh more focused in terms of where the show is going and the and the story that it's telling if he didn't know like the intuition the, of Ahsoka, I don't think that this episode, this movie would have been a, f or not movie, this episode would have been a far stretch because like he was like, Oh, Ahsoka, you know, she's smart. She's very, 
quick on her feet. She's she's you know she's intelligent. She'll know what to do as soon as I give her the just one word fives. You know, and when she finds that out, you know she you feel like you know this is like a brother and sister uh, dealing with their all this stuff. She has two brothers, one Anakin, and then the other one. Uh, Rex and unfortunately Rex is the only the, the best bet that she has. <laughs> well, it's always uh, been the central question of the show from the inception of it is for the characters that we don't see in the movies, what happens to them in Order sixty six? Do they survive the events of the Clone Wars? Um, and especially for the clones and which clones. Look, the, the main characters of the show have always been um, – the original characters of the show have always been Ahsoka Tano and, and Rex. And you – honestly, when you compare how Order 66 was handled in Revenge of the Sith, you have a bunch of nameless characters who at the time – you couldn't give a shit about. You don't even know who they are. You never yeah. heard them talk. It's just a bunch of nameless, faceless people being exterminated. And while the the tone is what sad, what the hell is a Plo Koon? <laughs> you you get the point that it is sad. It just doesn't feel personal. Mm-hmm. This made it personal. This made it hurt seeing Captain Rex. And you notice that he was the only clone that put up a fight but even he couldn't get over the sway of that inhibitor chip and shows you just how haunting oh, okay. and mm-hmm. scary that thing is because the other clones we saw they turned like a switch just like they were battle george or something and rex seeing him drop the helmet with tears in his eyes like try and warn her before like, he completely fell under the sway and then shoot her that made it deeply personal more than the movie ever could or yeah. in this case episode three and again it's like it it shows you a little bit of insight of how how good that this the emotional journey that you go on with episode uh, with with these episodes of clone wars and then for moreno herself to react to order 66 and be heartbroken because she knows like the, you know these characters from the clone wars i think that that that, that truly is something more endearing there's one aspect i want to comment on that i really it's kind of been on my mind about what we're seeing in the episode because we can connect i really loved i think maybe my my favorite part of the episode was the conversation with rex and ahsoka on the cruiser while they're in hyperspace right before they salute each other and you can connect what they're saying also to what Bo-Katan said in the beginning of the episode where she said I wish I was good at something other than war and you have a character who for the first time in a long time is faced with having to lead and having to find herself exist in a reality without war And that's exactly the same thing that Ahsoka and Rex said. Mm -hmm. When Ahsoka said, ever since I've been a Padawan, I've been a soldier. And that's exactly what Rex has. And Rex wouldn't even be alive if if it it wasn't wasn't for the Clone War. War. So you have an interesting connection where you have these characters who are now suddenly coming to terms with the ending of something that they've they've only known. Mm -hmm. Um. Almost like their causes mortality, you know, it, it, and again, it's like something more deeper and we never really see that, you know, everybody's just like, oh, they blew up the Death Star and saved the day kind of thing. But you, you're dealing with the mortality, I get like that, the intuitive mortality of all these characters and their driven forces and their, their, their mainstays of being. I I think that that is deeper than I think what the what the movies could you know themselves uh, tackle, um, because that that is the price of war. You know, everybody's like, oh, you know, you save the day. Now what? You don't you don't ask that question. But it's also still important to show just how disillusioned Ahsoka really is still mm-hmm. with the Jedi. You know, I I do appreciate the extra exchange that she had with Yoda in him 
knowing that she had something on her mind and him still wishing her all the best you know yoda in many ways is kind of the best uh jedi that there is um unlike mace window <laughs> yeah that that was um that was really upsetting to see um but again if you go back and look at that reaction ahsoka was hardly surprised and it's so sad because like with the siege of Mandalore, there are many instances in which like you can see everybody has bits and pieces of the information needed to kind of like prevent this catastrophe. But because all of the different um, parties Egos. are so like um, are so they don't trust each other at all. That's what happens to cause everything to collapse. I don't blame Ahsoka one bit. For not telling them. Fuck them. For yeah. All, you know? They kind yeah. of got what they were getting. Really. Yeah. Um. Although I do... Although it... It makes me kind of root for the Emperor even more. <laughs> when... <laughs> when the whole Mace Windu situation <laughs> happens. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, Cause he, cause you blast even, throughout the window. Even if, like, she would have told Yoda, like... Look at how he was with Anakin when he told her when he told him about Padme. He was basically yeah. like, "Man, eh, yeah. don't worry about it. No, Everybody both Yoda dies." And Obi Wan, both Yoda and Obi Wan, they, from what I understand, those characters are much more. They're not as hardlined about it. They 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 do see the value of the institution and advocate for its principles. But even they, at times, we see mm -hmm. they don't fully agree with certain things, and they do understand that they've made many mistakes more than the other Jedi granted. That doesn't mean that either Obi-Wan or Yoda were completely absolved of the sins of that generation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we even see that while they do survive the Clone War, they do make mistakes. And a big mistake they make in the original trilogy is to not tell Luke that Vader is his father. And they're uh, hubris. Exactly. And you see you know. Luke throw that back at them. But like a certain point of view. Are you kidding me with that bullshit? <laughs> you it, should it, have told you know, me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think like The Last Jedi is so valid in where its uh, standpoint is with the Jedi. And why that, that I guess that kind of idea of being a Jedi should die. Should completely die. Because like in their hubris, you know, uh, out from the ashes of that hubris came Darth Sidious, you know, and out came the Empire and a bunch of doom upon the galaxy. And I think that that is the, I think that's the key, really, you know, much like Lois Lane was the key. <laughs> <laughs> I got jokes. Um, it, 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 it makes it more... I guess defined than than uh than broad when talking about you know the Jedi and all that stuff because the Jedi are regarded as like oh this they're the superheroes of this universe you know they could they could move rocks and all that stuff and it's like no it's more than that you know it's like taking the moral high ground you know uh, it is defining what is right wrong choosing of which path to take either it be the a uh, dead center the 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 good way or you know sometimes any occasion uh the act of piracy is the is the right uh right path to take it it is like this this whole big you know debunkle why star wars i think it warrants a conversation rather than just like it's kids you know storytelling yeah it is kids storytelling but they treat the, the the way that some of these things you know while the dialogue may be clunky at times it does lend itself to some good like you know think pieces with the with the conversation of the story itself that i think makes it a, a bit of a unique situation because you're not going to get much you know character analysis out of like something like roly poly Oli or handy manny but you're going to get something out of like star wars that i think is important because by and large this is made for 12 years old but it is told in such a way that i think is very important to, to tell about like art and storytelling this is 
very rudimentary what should introduce kids you know in terms of like modern day storytelling this th this should be your first step you know into a larger world so to speak with everything that that you know with deeper storytelling that is uh valid in that sense you get what i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. okay <laughs> um any other thoughts on on shattered there's a lot to say i mean <laughs> mall mall the hallway scene the i am the force and the forces with me again they use that little bit to really show there's so much that really is suggested or, or implied from that sequence and you know, something it, again it distinguishes ahsoka so much from the jedi that exist in in her time because that's not something that's normally said and she just thought of that um and believing in a, in a power bigger than herself and with her and rex chanting that it was just a beautiful spiritual moment for the force and for that for those characters and mm -hmm. i love though even though that you know it was heartbreaking to see rex just turn just like that on ahsoka and like hunt her down he saved her life right at the very end can we also like talk about the contrast between ahsoka and ray where she's like i am the force and ray is like i am the jedi what like at the end well in the movie that you guys don't count <laughs> i well, i think that's really cool. she's apparently all of the jedi <laughs> yeah that's why i'm like that like it's so <laughs> like it's just so funny that like <sighs> this like two second scene means so much rather than well, Ray and Ahsoka Rey. have a lot of things in common. You know, it's really interesting. No, but to it's me like how... it's yeah. different because Ahsoka is like she doesn't want to be a Jedi. Like she's right. done with it. And Ray, even though Luke told her like no, like the Jedi weren't gr like that great. Mm -hmm. She's still like a Jedi. I don't know. But the Jedi can be. They yeah. can be great. It's just that they haven't been. Uh huh. And hopefully that you know, you know, I don't even know what, talking about Ray and then what happened in Episode Nine just kind of like gets me depressed. But like, <laughs> you know, you would hope that she would take into consideration what what Luke, you know, did. And then Luke was also it's like he really put himself at blame, and he he thought that because he failed, nobody else could succeed. She could, and she probably will. And she can make the Jedi what they always are, you know, what they should have been. There are a lot of, I think, similar qualities between Ahsoka and Rey as characters, mm -hmm. especially like what I admire about them is their resolve and their authenticity and their earnestness. And they're just good. They're, the Jedi were supposed to keep the the spiritual balance yeah in the world it wasn't supposed to like be swayed in one way or the other i just it find just it crazy how those two characters have so much in common and yet <laughs> go to any star wars fan and boy would they they tear each other apart like telling you like well one character is great and one character is shit uh yeah but we we've had many conversations about that that whole argument and everything like that around <laughs> it. So um, let it's best not to dwell on the past. Uh, yeah, uh, the light save the lights not the lightsaber the hallway sequence was you know it, it very much reflected upon another scene that we've seen before in Star Wars. Um, and it, it it's funny Darth Vader had to use a lightsaber when all Maul used was a piece of tin. <laughs> yeah, Maul kind of one upped him <laughs> because well, he basically was just. I mean, for once, I know, but he was he was far more vicious to those clones than I think even Vader. I think Vader was very like merciful when he killed those rebels. It seemed like because holy fuck, like Maul decapitated. Like I literally. The best way to describe that sequence, he literally cut them to pieces. He literally cut them to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and we shouldn't be like, we should be sad because like those clone troopers have been like around for the whole series, you know, and they used to be good up until like 
their mm-hmm. mind control chip kicked in. But it makes it, I guess, hurt less and make it more fun to see than being... they're trying to kill Ahsoka yeah. and all that stuff, even though that they were conditioned to do so in the first place. Um, Yeah, I, I liked it. It got me goosebumps. I was so thrilled that I only had to wait a few more days. <laughs> we should, we, 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 we can't it. forget to mention Fives, though, because if it not for Fives, they would have been dead. Ahsoka oh, and yeah. Rex. Shout out yeah, to Fives. Without... Cheers to Fives. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you know what I love about it is, like, I think that left me a little sour with that arc, even though it was a great arc, is, like, his fucking death was in vain. Now it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he said fives, find out what happened with fives mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Fives is the key. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, a lot of BBS jokes. Um, so yeah, I liked it. Uh, uh, do you guys want to see what happens next? <laughs> Are you guys ready? Okay, no. no. Are you guys ready? Well, too bad. We're gonna we're gonna do it. All right. If you're following along with us, we're gonna be setting our uh, stream at zero on Disney Plus. So join us, everyone, if you if you want to, or just listen to the to us reacting. Um, there may be points where there are where there is dead air and we are oh there will be (laughs) ingrained (laughs) with what's going on so please forgive us about that but other than that we're gonna be when the moments come we are definitely gonna react and all that stuff so uh yeah so get your players ready (laughs) i feel like this is both an audio commentary and a podcast (laughs) We're breaking Red Spot Entertainment grounds over here. So uh, set your players to zero, and we are going to begin in five, four, three, two, one, and play. Here we go. Oh, no. (laughs) Fucking music, man. That fucking... I feel like I'm at church. <laughs> Holy fucking fu- Oh my god, this I can't. This is scary. <laughs> okay, man. I'm out. <laughs> I feel wow. like I'm watching stuff I shouldn't see. <gasps> I forgot we ended here. Oh no. She's so good. Ow. I set my laser from stun to kill. (laughs) Guys, I'm already done. (laughs) I'm done. This is amazing. <laughs> Those droids Where's are great. Filoni droid. Oh. Yes. Wow. 
What does Maul have up his sleeve? This is crazy. <gasps> Ow. He's really mauling them down. <laughs> what? Isn't that like the engine room? Of the cruiser? Oh yeah, they're crashing. He wants them to die. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Dang. Wow. That's a lot of coils for hyperdrive. Oh, Ooh. fuck. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's a, that's a broken ship. They're not going to Coruscant now. No. Wow, this music, though. It really isn't that hard to figure out what happened. I mean, a little bit of sabotage. That's no moon. That's bad. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's not unsettling. Sinking, we're crashing. (laughs) Is that? The only one left? No, okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Fuck me. Clones. Suck them out into space at this point. We're all gonna die. Oh my god. Oh, this is so sad. Is that Jesse? That's Jesse, yeah. That's the art Jesse trooper. Clemens? Oh my god. Oh no! (laughs) 
Moreno, are you biting your nails? <laughs> no judging. This shit is good. What's going to happen? <laughs> oh, this is painful. Wow. <sighs> This is so tense. That didn't work. Return of the Jedi much? Isn't that for them? Yep. Oh, oh. my god. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh, oh fuck. No. Oh shit. Oh no. You idiot. Did the droid just laugh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Asshole. <laughs> oh, this is nice. She expels force lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would explode. <laughs> oh, <gasps> no! Rest in peace. She 
She had to protect her friend. Ooh, that was nice. He's gone. Oh my god, what is that? Wow. <laughs> wow. I want more of that. <laughs> Notice how it's a hole. A donut's hole. Mm, like, well, that didn't help much. Oh well. <laughs> He's like, fuck. <laughs> oh, now they go up? Uh -huh. Oh no! <laughs> Stop it! <gasps> oh no! <laughs> They didn't have to do that. Droid lives matter. <clears throat> Dude, just get out of there already. Ow. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. Well, they're dead. Bye. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh fuck. What happened? Where? Try spinning. That's a good trick. On your left. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. Grab it. Firmly grasp it. Wow. Oh, why are they doing this to myself? 
Oh, look at that. <laughs> that R7. Oh, no. That's pretty morbid. Wow. Oh, notice what she's wearing, guys. A cloak. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Fuck. Uh Look how amazing this animation looks, guys. Oh, this is hell. breathtaking. <clears throat> this is we're in the Empire now. Oh shit. Well, that was really dour. <laughs> Did everybody else die or what's going on? <laughs> well... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not ready. Um, it's over. Well, um, <laughs> in, initial reactions, guys? <laughs> <gasps> okay. Wow. We're stunned. 
We are stunned. We we don't know what to make of all of this. It it this is Wow. Who wants to go first? Who talks first? You talk <laughs> first. I talk first. <laughs> We're getting a lot of noises. We're getting lots of oh boys. We're getting a lot of did somebody die? Somebody did die. A lot of people die. <laughs> um wow. The finale. The fucking finale. They all fucking died. That was really macabre. <laughs> I mean, in general, but then that ending was... Wow. She's broken. Wow. The first thing you can say about as far as this series finale, the first thing that comes to mind when you compare what we just witnessed to something like Rebels, what a complete difference <laughs> in tone. What a complete difference. Where one was a, what you would consider to be a happy ending and a cliffhanger. <laughs> this was like, everybody died in the end. <laughs> it's kind of what this is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it Honestly, with this, you could automatically springboard into Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, which is which is really nice. Um, it was so like weird. We're in the Clone Wars, right? We're in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, and we see Empire paraphernalia like the like the probe droids and the stormtroopers and and Vader. It's so weird. It's kind of, it's kind of otherworldly. Um, it honestly. When you're going into the dips and valleys of it, I I wasn't expecting this, like the way it ended, mm -hmm. um, in a good way, of course, because I thought that it was going to end, it was going to be like Yavin 4 and all that stuff. I mean, I mentioned it to, to you guys before, but it was like... And then she gets the name Fulcrum and that's it, you know, that, you know, Ahsoka lives on to fight another day. But at this point, she's just like, she's her broken. Day, her days as anything remotely Jedi are done. And that's where you get like this awesome transition from her now to clone wars to her wielding the white lightsabers that we see in rebels it, it's such a, like a smooth transition from that and the way that she feels well an even smoother transition still is the novel like that last scene that we saw mm -hmm. with with rex and ahsoka is the beginning of the novel yeah like beat for beat and her leaving her lightsabers there to intentionally you know throw the empire off the scent to like to confirm her death in that sense mm -hmm. so we literally pick up with ahsoka like what happens directly after that in the novel if you want more ahsoka content go yeah. read that novel directly so yeah. this rogue one's it pretty basically much. <laughs> um it, it honestly it, it was a really good finale really good uh, again, we mentioned it before in sh uh, when we were talking, discussing about Shattered a little while ago. It th the key skeleton to this whole entire show was Rex and Ahsoka, and the way yeah. that it left off on that. Um, you know, it doesn't have any confirmations or anything like that. It just like it shows them witnessing the aftermath of whatever the hell Order sixty six is. Um, and again, it, it's just like this whole accumulation of all that stuff. I mean, episode three had little hints of hope, you know, when 
uh, Uncle Baru and and uh, Uncle Owen, uh, uh, Uncle Owen and <laughs> Uncle oh, Baru, sorry. Uncle Baru. That's a parallel universe. Um, when when they're at the Lars homestead, just looking out at the binary sunset, you know, you have that sense of hope. Uncle Baru, I'm not gonna forget that. That's hilarious. <laughs> but it it's just here you have just wreckage literally i mean the the series ends with the with the wreck and it, honestly cuz the clone wars doesn't end on a happy note obviously yeah and it's very fitting of what the thematic tone is with the clone wars cuz if it did end up on a happy note it would be completely devoid of the characteristics of what the Clone Wars is in terms of Star Wars history. Um, and to have it be like this, I think it, I, I think it suited it really well. I think, and I think that makes it a, a fitting finale and it makes sense to where everything winds up and again we have Ahsoka she's utterly again it was a wreck she is a wreck um and I think that makes it the more fitting finale I mean when I look at finales I'm like how does it fit is does it make sense within everything yes it does make sense and this definitely makes sense of what it what it did Filoni god damn <laughs> Dave, Dave Filoni, you you did you 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 did done it. You killed some droids in the process. I haven't oh been left God. that speechless. That speechless for I mean that's the same period of time. Like that silence you guys just heard us react to it was just like trying to like process what we just saw. It's a lot though that. The majority of the last few minutes, there was no dialogue. It was completely silent. And the score had to do the, the, you know, had to carry the weight and really, you know, tell us what was happening. And so much happened in all of that. And of course, it suited perfectly with, with, with Vader just being this husk of nothingness now, this monster that is, of, of course, a few words. But he takes I have the light very little. Saber. Yeah, go ahead. What happened? Oh, her light. He kept her lightsaber. Oh, That's no. right. He kept her lightsaber. I hate I, it. Uh, I really want to know how long, how much time passed when between he, that scene and when uh, we see them again in Twilight of the Apprentice. Well, I will specifically I really want to know like how like I assume what we just saw with Vader showing up there and picking up the lightsaber I assume that's before their encounter in Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. I yeah, it had to be. Okay, but here's the thing though. I cuz I think it's just him like tying loose ends for the emperor, and this is just one of those loose ends. Um, so I have a feeling that this took is... him a while to find it, though. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I this is definitely quite recently scarred Anakin Skywalker that we're seeing. It's it at least what I way. at least what I read. Like he's just become this monster he's completely broken and again it's like it's it's like poetry you know where it rhymes um it you have these two people the master and the apprentice you know with anakin and ahsoka and they're both broken people i just realized like that republic cruiser with all those like clone graves and then with Vader looking at it, the desolation, it just perfectly illustrates the destruction, the collapse of the Republic, and then the formation of the Empire. Like, what yeah. a profound, you know, sense of imagery. And so much is being said through all of that. Mm -hmm. That amazing final sequence with, or final shot of 
Vader walking away, you know, and the reflection coming across one of the clone trooper helmets in the snow. It's kind of haunting. And it's a very poignant ending. It is. And also, like, it, it's not just Ahsoka. Like, that was his people. Like, those are the people that he was in charge of. Yeah. Like, they're all gone. And I don't... I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> it... Yeah. It, it It's beautiful, honestly. I think this whole ordeal was beautiful clone wars well worth the watch definitely um i'm glad that it didn't tie in with you know oh it's episode four and all that stuff because we already got that already we've yeah. seen that multiple times where it bridges with episode four right. or, or rebels and all that stuff and i'm glad that it, there was no bridge it was just like you know the pieces that already fall into place already mm-hmm just just to see it's things that we haven't seen yeah just to see this broken these broken characters kind of left and distraught of you know the wreckage that they left behind it's kind of poetic justice really when you're seeing everything come full circle in that sense while also making a huge gap in between it i i think that makes it uniquely star wars by telling this kind of tale and this kind of story hold on <laughs> excuse me um i i think uh my sneeze was so powerful it made alexis soto leave <laughs> um but yeah it's just I, I think it's just a brilliant cherry on top with all this stuff um we were wondering if we were gonna see anakin one more time we did technically mm-hmm. but instead he's his former self more machine than man twisted and evil i i don't know what do you what do you feel how do you feel like it left off i mean this ending is just it makes perfect sense as to how it ended like it had to have been this way like there's no way this would have ended differently like mm-hmm. it just all destruction and hurt with yeah. everybody involved and yeah <laughs> it it's on a yeah i ha- i have no other words to say about this i mean i <laughs> The complexities between Rex and, and Ahsoka, and we, we we got that in this. They're the last people standing of the remnants of the Old Republic. Um, just broken, and again, it is like what the previous title uh, suggested. Shattered. Mm-hmm. Everything is shattered, and in, in its wake, we have the Empire rising from the Republic's ashes. And that's definitely what Sidious wanted you know yeah. he wanted to de- completely destroy it and we got that imagery with like the grand imagery that we got of the rise of the Republic which was at the end again I'm going to speak of episode 2 positively for once the, the, the symbolic imagery of like all the um what will be known as the Star Destroyers later you see those ships rising with the clones in its midst you know at the end of episode two mm-hmm. and that's kind of like the metaphorical like the the new republic has you know has arised let's this is what's going to be from now on and to have that imagery of the big old uh, uh star destroyer i don't know i'm pretty sure it has a name alexis soto is not here <laughs> so fuck it um but to see that the Republic Star Destroyer completely crashed the perfect metaphor of where this war is. And also to see it hollow on the inside, it just like, it also mirrors what this war was. And that was, it was very hollow to begin with. Nobody knew why they were, Mm -hmm. they were fighting. They were just fighting Yeah. with the empire kind of 
overshadowing everything and all that stuff. You have perfect, you know, visual metaphors that completely describe this whole thing. Um, yeah. Uh, do you feel that they did Ahsoka justice with her final outing in this? Or as far as we know, final outing? I mean, I don't think it has to do with that, like, doing it justice. It's just telling the story the way it's supposed to happen. And, like, this is just Mm -hmm. what was supposed to happen. I think Rebels, if you talk about doing justice to a character, I think Rebels is it. Um, But, like, I don't know. It's just, like, like I said, this is just something that we needed to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, Ahsoka has been through some shit. Oh, man. <laughs> the stories she can tell. Um. Yeah. I, I I love it. I love it. I love Star Wars The Clone Wars. It's, it's good, good Star Wars shit. And I think we've been starving of good Star Wars shit for a while. And <laughs> it's finally before us. So, um, yeah. Alexis Soto, you have anything to add? Um, are we closing it off here? Uh, do you want to? Do you have anything? Oh, well, I'm, wanna... I'm asking uh, just is this like my final thought or are we just continuing the conversation? Uh, continuing the conversation unless you have nothing to add. I'm confused. Like, is this like, because if you're saying that I had nothing to say, that means we're going to end then, right? Uh, yeah, unless, unless you guys have something to add, because I, I, I think it's good. I think this episode was really good. I think the way it ended was really good. Um, do you guys have anything else you guys want to talk about or it is um it's over and everything that needed to be said about this finale was kind of laid on the floor just like that it's honestly more than what we could have hoped for and it's so so good to finally say that this show has finally and for all hopefully concluded. <laughs> finally. Announced next year. <laughs> well, Clone Wars, the adventure continues. <laughs> well, you know, my last thought of anything would have to say is I really do love Star Wars. <laughs> and um, Really? It's just good that we got to experience this after something that was, you know, abysmally disappointing. But as far oh, as the last Jedi, as far as the Clone Wars is concerned, um, here's to the Clone Wars. Here's uh, the Clone. Since we're in audio, we can't really like visually do a salute, but this is our salute to the Clone Wars. Yeah, and everything salute like Rex and Ahsoka mm-hmm. did. Ugh. What are they called? Five hundred one. The 501st. The 501st uh, Legion of the Clone Wars. The Grand Army of the Republic. Yeah. Uh, It's chilling. It's good. Good Star Wars content. I love it. I hope you love it too. This is a very unique episode on the Fantasy Fair. This will definitely be a podcast long remembered. Um, You gotta work that title in, huh? uh Uh-huh. Work it, work it. (laughs) Work, work, fashion, baby. All right. Okay. Um, Alexis Soto, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Alexis Moreno. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Alexis Soto has poured himself a gulper. Um, I'm Kyle Lara, and as always, if you like what you heard here, you want to <laughs> delve into more, you can check oh. us out everywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, check out what's going on in Red Spot Entertainment. Uh, to the table should be coming back shortly. Um, I already discussed it with uh, with Peter uh, Martinez, uh, and also Bond and Beyond is coming back short, uh, fairly shortly as well. So keep your ears peeled for that. And speaking of ears, stay magical, everyone.